afternoon. The second lecture is going to be by, by Mr. Anwar Motan. Uh, he is a senior system analyst, and he works in King Faisal Hospital Research Center and Computer Center. Uh, title of the presentation is the uh, goal and scope of health level 7, HL7, and how King Faisal Special Hospital and Research Center is adopting to this standard. Uh, Mr. Motan actually has 20, 25 years of experience in computer as system analyst, and he has uh, spent time in uh, mainframe application development, client server application development, analysis and designing <coughs> applications, strategic planning, uh, contingency planning, product evaluation, etc. He has also has, has presented several uh, papers nationally, internationally, in application and development methodology and, compli and complying with standards. Mr. Motan. Thank you very much, Chairman. <clears throat> the organization and delivery of healthcare services is an information intensive effort. It is generally accepted that the efficacy of healthcare operations is greatly affected by the exist extent of automation of information management functions. Many believe that healthcare delivery agencies that have not automated their information mm -hmm. systems are not able to compete effectively in the healthcare market of the 90s. In the past two decades, uh, healthcare institutions and hospitals in particular have begun to automate aspects of their information management. Initially, such efforts have been geared towards reducing paper processing, improving cash flow, and improving management decision making. In later years, a distinct focus on the streamlining and improving clinical and ancillary services has evolved, including bedside and patient side systems. Within the last few years, interest has developed in integrating all information related to the delivery of health care to a patient over his or her lifetime, that is the electronic medical record. It has also been envisioned that all or part of the electronic medical record should be able to communicate electronically anywhere as needed. It is not uncommon today for the average hospital to have installed computer systems for admission, discharge, and transfer clinical laboratories, uh, radiology, billing, and accounts receivable to site field. Often different vendors or in-house groups have developed these applications with each product having highly specific information format. As hospitals have gradually expanded information management operations, a need to share critical data among the systems has emerged. Comprehensive systems that aim at performing most, if not all, healthcare information management are in production by selected vendors. These systems may be designed in a centralized or distributed architecture, nevertheless, to the extent that such systems are truly complete, their use would mitigate the need to an external data interchange standard such as Health Level 7. So what is Health Level 7? <clears throat> the term Level 7 refers to the highest level of open system interconnection, OSI model of the International Standards Organization. HL7 really conforms to the conceptual definition of an application-to-application -application interface placed in the seventh layer of the OSI model. What are the advantages of having HL7? It is a basic foundation for clinical computing, allows users to exchange information in a standard format, and it takes advantage, full advantage of existing computing hardware and network services. What is the uh, goal of HL7? The standard should support exchanges among systems implemented in widest variety of technical environments. Its implementation should be practical in a wide variety of programming languages and operating systems. It should also support communications in a wide variety of communication environments, ranging from a full OSI compliant to a more primitive point-to-point RS-232 or transfer of data through diskettes or tape. What are the uh, HL7 encoding rules? Um, component of the message. A message is the atomic unit of data transferred between systems. It comprises of a group of segments in a defined sequence. And then comes the event that initiates the message 
which is called the trigger event. In each segment, what is a segment? A segment is a logical grouping of data fields. They may occur once in a message or repeat in a message, and I'll show you some examples. Um, for example, ADT message may contain a message header, an event code, PID, which is patient identification. <coughs> These HL7 message, uh, they contain field separators. They also contain component separators. You'll be wondering why do you need all these is because sometimes you have to repeat some of the uh, items within the, within, the essay, within the message. So you need some of these component separators. You need subcomponent separator. You also need reputation separator. These are special characters basically because they don't, they are not basically used when you are sending message, but they do help as a as a type of uh, break between each, each item within the component of the segments. For example, let's look at the first one, which is the message header. Message header describes where the record is coming from, which application, which system, and where it's going to. Event code tells you <coughs> what type of event it is. It is a, whether it's an admission, discharge, transfer, or type of the order record, or whether it's a result coming out some some patient. Basically, this is a result which is posted as serum electrolyte, and it gives you the values in the observation extended segment for the serum sodium, potassium chloride, and carbon dioxide. So within the, within the whole message, you have basically message header, event code, patient identifications, the encounter, which is the visit information for each patient. ORC, in this case, is the order segment, and the, uh, the observation is that it was the test serum electrolyte. How did we do the integration in our uh, King Faisal Hospital? We went through and <coughs> basically set up the HCI software in between our, all of our applications that are run, running on different systems. Laboratory is running uh, on the DEC Alpha right now. We are sending all of our broadcast, ADT broadcast messages from HIS to different systems, all we have to do is set it up in HL7 format from HIS and give it to HCI, which in turn transmits to different systems. The only difference what we did uh, in this uh, from the HCI, if we wanted to send any messages, uh, we use the HL7 format. Uh, in the ORSAS, this is the operating room system which we are using on a network uh, platform. In this case, uh, we didn't want to populate all the patient information on the operating room system. So what we did, we wrote a small query function that comes out of the ORSAS operating system automatically when they are doing the schedule of the patient, and it sends a message to HCI. HCI, in turn, sends this query request to HIS, which reformats the query response for the patient and it sends back to HCI, which in turn give it to ORSAS. Even though it looks a little bit complicated, but over the computers, it takes only milliseconds, and the operator who is doing the scheduling of patient, she or he is able to see the patient information from, uh, coming from HIS uh, using HL7 format. And this is what we are doing from the servers. Um, from the client side, we are sending the query record to the server, which in turn sends, builds the query with the patient information and sends it back to the client. What HL7 makes possible, oncologist on wards needs laboratory results or a nurse needs to order pathology test, cardiac surgeon needs access to database over the internet, or researcher needs a list of patients, medications. All this can be done using the HL7 transmission of records from one application to the other independent of the system or the platform that they are running on it. What is the best way to implement HL7? First thing you have to do is to identify the application that require interface. You have to select the event codes that will be required. Whether you want to do for admission discharge transfers, event codes, or you would like to do for, the, um, for the, uh, any other type of uh, medical records request, or any instrument that you need to send the results from to a repository, you have to identify those type of event codes. And basically, HL7 is supporting 
lot of uh, medical records transactions. You have to also agree on the error messages. These are very, very important because a system which is requesting for any type of uh, information from another application, and if it is not there, then something has to be sent out as an acknowledgement giving the details why this system doesn't have it or whether the patient information is missing or whether the patient information doesn't have enough information. So all type of messages at the beginning, you have to agree on it. What is new in HL7 release 2.3? Um, first of all, there is a backward compatibility. So if you are running 2.1 or 2.2, you don't have to worry about it. Um, there is a backward compatibility. The inconsistencies and mistakes in 2.2 were corrected. An interface to patient accounting was added. Ancillary results, clinical trials, waveform data were added. Transcription management, chart location and tracking, deficiency analysis, consent and release of information were also added. Order entry and clinical observations were really extended in the new release. And the physician staff record was also extended. It's not added. It was there initially, but they have extended it now. <clears throat> to summarize this, uh, HL7 is a foundation for health-related exchange of information, smooth integration of all applications, and basically it allows you to use only single workstation to communicate over. You don't have to have multiple uh, terminals or PCs to communicate to different applications. The transmission between the applications become more or less transparent from just one PC. That's all I have. Thank you. We have 15 minutes to, or 20 minutes to, for questions. question, and I'll say the three of them together, one for Anwar and the other one for Will, and the third one for uh, Ms. Al-Khudairi. Okay. My, uh, the first question uh, for Anwar for the HL7, uh, do you anticipate uh, the HL7 to be plug and play by having uh, prepared packages and just for interface, and uh, then you go on? And the next part of the question for Anwar, to what level are the medical instrumentations are included in the HL7 uh, protocol? Now, uh, for uh, Will, uh, as uh, Ms. al Khadiri mentioned er uh, in her last presentation, most companies, they claim that uh, their uh, products are DICAM compatible and there are different levels of compatibilities. And you mentioned also that we have to make sure the compliance statements uh, to check that out. Is what benchmarking is used to make sure that this system is purely uh, DICAM uh, compatible? My last question is for the PAC system. Um, uh, how long you had your system there in, in the hospital and uh, what, what, what's the mean time between failures and what would happen if you have a crash to the system? Thank you. Yeah, HL7 is definitely not a plug and play as, um, as DICOM is. Definitely, it's, uh, you initially, you definitely have to sit down and find out what are the differences between the uh, transmission or the layout of the HL7. There are some inconsistencies, and uh, I think at the time when you are doing the system analysis, buying the product, 
you have to jot down you know, what type of uh, records that you will be transmitting and basically make sure that your vendor is following the same type of record layout. I have experience in our uh, past uh, purchases of soft civil softwares. We had several inconsistencies and it, it, you can just uh, do your analysis right and I think you will be okay. But definitely it's not plug and play, you have to do your homework. Uh, the other one you said was the how many, what type of instruments. Um, they are working on adding a lot of instruments. Um, Echolab um, instruments are added, uh, but the, every time you go into it, it's a big list, and if you want me to provide you with the list, I can get you one. Release 2.3 has added a lot of hardware, which uh, you can really play for your HL7 interface. Thanks. No, I, I've never had the benefit of, uh, of actually getting a bunch of compliance statements uh, before actually purchasing anything and <laughs> comparing what they, they say. So I, I really, in fact, I, I don't think I've actually ever held a compliance statement in my hand. I've only read about them. But uh, for instance, a compliance statement is going to say um, what 